I want your lunch money to get, or I'll kick your butt. school. I don't feel good, Mom. My stomach hurts. Come on, knock it off. It's time to get up. I feel like I'm gonna puke. Frankie, you're as cool as a cucumber. Come on, let's go to school. I'm really sick, Mom. If you don't believe me, take me to the doctor. Frankie, I'm losing my patience. It's time to get up and go to school. I don't feel good, Mom. I'm not going to school. I don't know what's going on. What didn't work well was the grandparents and the family members who said, just hit him back, you know? <laughs> just pop him back, you know? Just knock him down. Swing your book bag at him. Do this, do that. They all had very quick fixes to a problem that has taken a very long time to develop. Introducing our Back Off Bully team of experts. Dr. Stuart Twemlow is a doctor of psychiatry and a psychoanalyst. He is a consultant to the FBI on school shootings and the U.S. presidential campaign against youth violence. He is co-director of the Peaceful Schools Project for the Menninger Clinic's Child and Family Center and director of the Eric Erickson Center for Research and Education at Austin Riggs. A master of martial arts, he is an international lecturer on violence with over 150 publications. Dr. Frank Sacco is president of CSI, a private mental health center. He is an expert in child and family violence and has authored over 12 publications on youth violence. He holds a black belt in karate and is a consultant to the FBI on school shootings. Sensei Stephen Twemlo is director of the Topeka School of Martial and Meditative Arts and is the developer of the Gentle Warrior Program, a physical education curriculum for grades K through 5. He is an instructor in martial arts at the C.F. Menninger Memorial Hospital and at Washburn University. What is bullying? Is every time you fight or every time a child fights bullying? No, it is not. And this is a very important point. 
bullying is a process whereby somebody stronger, not necessarily physically, sometimes a little runt can be a bully, somebody stronger in some way, psychological or physical, that will humiliate repeatedly, put down, mock you to a point where eventually you begin to feel miserable, despairing, even depressed. It's not unusual for a child who's bullied to contemplate suicide or even commit suicide. And in very extreme cases, a child who's been victimized that badly may even commit homicide. I don't know, they just picked on me a lot. They picked on me before that. They would like, I could even like pee in the bathroom. They'd shove me in. Really? Like, oh, really? Oh, gross. Hey, what else did they do? Was it, was it disgusting? They call you names and stuff? No, they would push me down the stairs. And really? Mm-hmm. Basically broke down and told him that kids were being really mean to him. And my husband was bright enough to ask, well, what do you mean by being mean to you? And he told him that um, he was being pushed down the stairs. He was being punched in his privates. He was being um, verbally assaulted all the time. His homework was being taken. Every day, um, his lunch was being crushed and thrown in the trash from him. Everything bad that you don't ever want to happen to your child was happening to my son every day, all the time. The injury that a bully deals out to the child is always minor. I mean, it's common sense in a way. Think of this. Let's say the bully breaks a child's arm. What happens? He gets suspended. The police get called. The victim gets all the sympathy. What keeps a bully going is the humiliation and the audience of bystanders who stand around and get off on the bullying and enjoy the bullying. And the victim has to be miserable before the bully is satisfied. This is a bizarre, even perverse ritual of humiliation. Hey, Frankie. Going to class tonight? Yeah, I think I am. I'm so sore. Jumping jacket. Yeah. Hey, here comes Billy and Joey. Wow, look who we have here, Mr. Jock himself. Yeah. Hey, guys, isn't he a major geek? Come on, John, let's get out of too many losers. That's my homework. Yeah, was it? Oops, I forgot. Come on, guys, let's get out of here. You coming? Too many losers. Now remember, this is a power struggle. But it's not just the bully and the victim that are involved here. It's the audience, the bystanders. That is all the other kids that stand around, snicker, enjoy the humiliation, or even those that are afraid to do anything and are sort of frozen with fear. It may be the children that just uh, look the other way and walk off. It could even be a teacher who decides not to hassle with the problem because of the trouble it might get them into. This bully, victim, bystander triangle is the triangle of danger. This is the triangle that has to be broken. I don't know, he just grabbed me and threw me into a tree. Really? Yep. What are the other kids doing when you're doing that? I don't know, cheering, cheering him on. Cheering him on? Yeah, and then afterwards they like feel sorry for you and that's really messed up. Now when they, when they were cheering, what were they saying? Yeah, go, go, go. Like, five yeah. bucks on who? Five bucks on you, five bucks on me. Right. Yeah. Any child can be a bully. Any child can be a victim. Any can be a bystander. Don't think of the bully as some sort of alien from outer space. Your child can be a bully and likely is a bully. Your child is probably being a victim also and also a bystander. These roles change sometimes from moment to moment. You stand and observe a classroom, you'll see what's happening. So don't think of the bully as some sort of uh, defective individual. Could be your child too. Wish I had known before it became physical. I wish I had known when it was um, the verbal, the humiliation you're talking about, the shaming. I wish, I, I wish someone had helped him or we had given him the right tools to be able to intervene at that earlier point before it escalated to be the physical stuff. What was, what was the feeling like? For me, yeah. I don't know, sad or angry or depressed. 
You can't. I try to ignore them, but they don't stop. They all all day long. You ignore them. They, they pick on you all day long. Yeah. You be like me, 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 and you just ignore them. Me, 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 all all through the whole day in all classes. Now, when your child first goes to school, a lot of their bullying will be physical, especially with boys. In some ways, boys learn to deal with aggression by acting it out on their peers. Not all of that is uh, serious bullying. But as time goes on, as your child becomes more verbally skilled, the bullying gets meaner and meaner, nastier and nastier. So by the sixth or seventh grade, it's reached a peak of horribleness. And then girls take over. Did you find the girls were pretty mean to you? And Chestnut, yeah. All girl, girls are evil. Yeah. All girls are evil? Yeah, they're worse than boys, yep. There's nothing meaner than a, a little girl in the 11 to 15 year old range who decides that she wants to shut out her friends to teach them a lesson by not speaking to them, by shutting them out of the cliques and groups and clubs by making their friend not a popular girl, but one of the unpopular ones. Oh, oh, wait, wait. There was another circumstance before that kid beat me up. First thing, it was raining. We had to try to start a fire, and we had to try to build a little shelter. And of course, there was no room for me, of course. So I was stuck outside in the rain, so. so you built, built a shelter together, and they left you out? Of course. Every night, you try to uh, give enough attention to what they're saying, make sure that you didn't miss something when he was coming home and being frustrated and, and angry and weepy and unable to sleep and physical ailments and all the things that were, in hindsight, you look back and go, how, I should have known, I should have known, but how do you know? I mean, how do you know unless, I mean, we went to the school, unless your kid says something to you and you are bright enough to stop what you're doing in your life and bend down and say, well, what do you mean by that? Then you might never know. Frankie, I'm losing my patience. It's time to get up and go to school. I don't feel good, Mom. I'm not going to school. <sighs> I don't know what's going on. There's no more important skill you can give to your child when they go to school than how to handle bullying. There's no better way you can prepare your child for a decent education and a, and a pleasant school experience than to give them the skills and knowledge about how to handle bullies. Let no child get hurt like he did because it affected his ability to learn. It affected our ability to have a family, a normal family, you know, a functioning family. And um, I think the impact of that is really far reaching. I think that people don't realize this is an event that just happens and goes away. Kids remember it all the time. Now, how did it affect your family? I mean, you, you said that you said yeah. that it really disrupted what was going on. Sure. What happened? How did how did it impact? Well, you feel family? like you, your whole family. When one of your family members becomes a victim of a crime, and that's what bullying is. It's a crime. And when that happens to one of your family members, it's it's like the pebble in a big pond. It's a ripple effect. You know, you're worried every time your child goes out now. You wonder if you have given your children enough tools to be able to, to deal with difficult people in the world. You wonder if, you know, was there something you could have done to prevent that from happening to your child? Have you done something inadvertently to make your child a target? You know, does he have, like, the clothes to wear? Does he have, like, does he, is he speaking the language that the kids are speaking in his school? I mean, you want your child to be who they are but you have to realize they have to fit in with a group. His behavior at home was just so extreme. And I'd send this child off to school, and what I got off the bus was the Tasmanian devil. You know, he was just, the anger was intense. Did he take it out on you and his sister? And he did. He tried to, yeah. Bullying, I think, is a, it's a victim, and then I'm going to victimize right. in that cycle. And I think abuse, abuser. <laughs> Two times two was six. Two times two was six. Two times two is... you're such a dweeb. Two times two is four, not six. You're in the third grade and you're still adding with your fingers. You're so stupid. No, I'm not. Leave me alone. All you care about is sports and sucking up the grandma and grandpa for your stupid Pokemon cards. Come on, leave me alone. Frank, you're such an idiot. Mom, Mom, leave me alone. 
go. Sing this loser. How did it make you feel to learn that your child had been bullied at school? I'll probably cry because it just makes you feel so bad that your child was hurt and you couldn't protect them. That is the most awful feeling, to know that your child was injured and you could do nothing to stop it. I mean, it's a very guilt-provoking feeling. You feel like you failed your child. Just a sick game. A brand new way. Let's join together. Everybody say. We must have the mind and body approach. Our mind must be alert, and our body must be stretched out and ready to react to a situation. You don't have to be a black belt to deal with bullies. You don't have to learn to fight to deal with bullies. The wrong way to train your child is to, is to send them off for boxing lessons. Most of the ways that you most effectively handle bullies at any age is mentally. It's the skills you have with how you talk, with how you look, with how you think, and with how you feel, and even with how you stand, with your posture, with the way in which you can engage the bully's gaze, with the way in which you stand more erect than slumped. All of these sorts of things are what make you able to handle bullies. You know, if your kid walks into a room and feels, if your child walks into a room and they feel good about themselves, there's a certain posture that they have about themselves. It's the way they carry themselves. It's the way they feel when they're going to school. If you're looking at your child and they're standing in a group and they're, and they're actually starting to fold in on themselves, their shoulders are hunched, they're feeling bad about themselves, you'll see it in them. And looking back now, I can see those things have happened. Sensei, I don't know how to calm down and relax. I'm always stressed out. One of the most critical components of, of the program or of anything to do with self-defense is calm down relaxation techniques. And we have a couple methods that we use. Excellent. They work very effectively. If you calm down, if you give yourself a chance, you can think. And if you think, you may make the correct decision. The first technique is the five relaxation points. The first one are your toes. So wiggle your toes. Second, your fingers. Wiggle your fingers. That's if we make a fist, we just let it go. Loosen. The third is the shoulders. Up and down. The one thing that most people do before they throw a punch, grab, or push you is their shoulders will raise up. So what you want to do is loosen them. If you find that you're starting to do that in an argument, loosen. The next method is your jaw. A lot of people, when they get angry, they clench their teeth together. They loosen the jaw. And the, the fifth one is the tongue. Loosen the tongue. So what we can do is get everyone to tighten your toes, make a tight fist, shoulders up by your ears, clench your jaw, take your tongue and put it on the top of your mouth, and hold it like that for five seconds. Tense up your whole body. 
and then slowly relax all five points now. If you're in the position of, let's say, being assertively relaxed, you're ready for the bully. I want to make one point about this that's very important. This relaxed state is not a state of being half asleep. This is a state of high alertness. I call it a sort of alert readiness. And the second one that we use is our calm down technique. This is giving yourself a little bit of time so you can think and make the correct decision. Breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. Count to 10 in your mind. Deep breath in, breathe out. Very simple technique, a technique that if you do use, can help. These are items that you can practice with your child. You will benefit as well as your child. If your child can adopt a relaxed mindset so that the bully doesn't freak them out and frighten them, if your child can't relax, there's a much greater chance that they'll deal with bullying by being too timid and submissive or too hostile and aggressive. And then there'll be an even worse problem before. Personal space, it's your space. Okay, on body positioning, one of the key things that you need to be aware of is how close will you let that person get to you. You do not let the person get in your face. You try to keep them at least an arm length and a half away. Generally, most people try to keep someone or their boundary is three feet away. So be aware of the positioning. If they advance on you, you need to step back and keep that personal space around you. Very critical in self-defense. The first mindset we call scanning. Scanning, you can imagine, is somewhat like a radar. It's like a constant moving from point to point without settling on any one thing. As your child's mind and even eyes are looking around, it can be studying things like, is there anybody I, uh, nearby that can help me? Is there any way out? Are these people armed? Is there any possibility that I can surprise them? Do they look intelligent? Are they mentally ill and look crazy? A thousand different things your mind can take in as it is able to think and see and imagine scanning. Remember, if your mind is in the set of fear, the fear will make it uncreative and repetitive, and the scanning will not be possible. Sensei Steve, what if they knock me down to the ground? Very important to learn what to do on the ground. This is the, the place where you, you're going to be the most victim-like. Most people think you can't do anything on the ground. We want to work body positioning, and then we want to work how to stand up. First thing you do is you still have the same personal space around you, whether you're sitting or standing. As soon as someone gets in that space, we go to what we call sitting position. One hand comes back, one knee goes down, one knee is up, elbow on the knee, palm facing out. This hand is here to block. This hand, the other hand is to brace you so you don't fall back. Once we are in sitting position, the front hand is up to protect, to block, protect the face. The back hand is to keep you balanced. If the hand's not there, you can easily fall back. So the hand's there to brace, this hand is here to block. Your feet are in a pretty good position for balance. The other mindset is more focused, but still relaxed. There's an oriental name for it, which means no mind. Let's call it a no mindset. It doesn't mean no mind. What it means is that you focus your attention on all of the things around you in a relaxed way without worrying about yourself. You aren't the sole center of attention. Instead of worrying about 
your body being hurt and your mind being hurt, you focus all your energy on what's outside of yourself, paying close attention to all of the sorts of things that we talked about and that you will learn about on this video. Observe your bully closely. Watch for all of the options and possibilities for escape. Sensei, what if they chase me while I'm on the ground? As your the bully circles around, you keep your hand, your toe, and your eyes facing them. Do not just circle and go in one tight circle like this. You will not get the distance between you and your attacker. As you circle, as you move, I scoop back, scoop back. As I move, the victim moves, the person on the ground. However I move, they are moving. Note their hand, toe, and eyes are always facing me. This is a drill you can work. If they don't move, what my goal is, if you stay free, froze right there, is to get beside or behind them. So your goal is to not let me do that. So it's a good little drill you can work at home. You can practice this watching TV. Someone comes in and you can just make a game out of this. However I go, you move. Okay, now the next part of this is we have to stand up correctly. What I want to show here is why we don't stand up the traditional way. So let's say you're sitting regular. Very slowly start standing up. Watch the head movement. See how it comes forward, her eyes are down, now she's up. Try it again. The bad thing about that is as she stands up like this, you get hit, you get kicked or kneed. You do not see the strike. The other bad thing about sitting or standing the traditional way is you're off balance. She tries to get up again, off balance. Very easy to push someone down from that position. So now we're gonna learn the correct way. We are in the stance, so we learned that stance. We're sitting here, the person gets in our personal space, sitting position. We have done the moving around, we have got a little bit of space in between myself and the bully. Now we have to stand up. The hand that's on the knee comes down beside the knee that's on the ground. So now both hands are in push-up position, shoulder width apart. The second part of this is we drop the head, lower the head a little bit, still keeping your eye on the opponent. The third part of this is we have a space here, a triangle space in between the leg, it's up. We take this foot behind, so this is the movement that this foot's going to make. So we go to stand, hand comes down, head drops just slightly, the foot goes behind, and then we jump up, hands up, and we yell back off. Back off! When you're very frightened, when your mind is terrified, when it's not relaxed, there are several things that happen to it. One, it keeps on going over the same thing over and over and over again. It thinks the following, that person's going to hurt me. What can I do? That person's going to hurt me. What can I do? That person's going to hurt me. What can I do? A mind of somebody who's frightened is very uncreative. It doesn't think of how to get away, how to escape, what to say. We say, my mind froze. Sensei, what if they tried to drag me off by the wrist? Okay, the next escape is a basic, simple wrist escape. If they grab you single or double. The key thing to remember on this, if someone grabs your wrist, you immediately make a fist. You twist, then you bring your hand back, elbow up. So that is the basic motion. They grab your, your wrist, you expand, you twist, you pull your fist back, and you bring your elbow up. We are working leverage. What we're doing here is as soon as I grab, you make the fist. What we do is we twist just slightly. It can possibly open the fingers up with the twist. So the reason we twist, if I've got a good grip 
and she twists, it may loosen the hands. And as you can see, she can get out. Now, after she twists, we're gonna do this very slow to show you that it can work slow. She's got a tight fist, she's twisted. Now, very slowly, she's gonna bring her fist back towards her and raise her elbow up in the air. It's very hard for someone grabbing your wrist to keep a hold. On a double, two hands, she will make the fist. She will reach down in between my hands and grab her own fist. She will pull that fist back and bring her elbow up in the air. She will step back and tell me to back off. Step off. And then leave the situation. One thing, if it's a larger person grabbing a smaller person, and let's say she does the fist, she does the twist, she pulls back, but she's having some problems. Maybe I'm physically so much stronger than her that she's going to have some problems. So she goes to plan B. When that becomes a problem, she takes her other hand, grabs her own fist, and pulls back, elbow up, shows me her hands and foot positioning, tells me to back off. Back off. This move can be used with a combination of grabbing and trying to pull. So let's say I grab, I start pulling, you lean away. Just before I get you off, you jump forward. Now she does the twist, up, back off. Back off. She is out. So we can put those moves together in a combination. I don't know. He just grabbed me and threw me into a tree. Really? Yep. We're going to try it on each other. A couple things to remember. When you do escapes, it has to be 100% commitment. 40, 50, 60% effort will not do it. When you decide to do it, it has to be all the way. When we are doing the wrist escapes, we are using the voice. The voice is constantly being used while these escapes are going on. And one more tip that may help also when you do the escape, let's say you grab my wrist, twist. As we bring it up, you may bend the knees. That motion of just bending the knees and coming up, kind of like you're scooping up, can help with the leverage on the move. OK, the bully comes in, grabs the wrist. We make a fist. We twist. Note how it opens up the fingers. Pulls the fist back, elbow up. Steps back, yells, back off. Back off! OK, and we go over and try the same thing again. Grab the wrist. OK, this time, he may have a little problem getting that out. So he makes the fist, twist, but now he can't quite get it out, so he brings the other hand over, grabs his own fist. Back off! Now this time, you're gonna be the bully. You are gonna grab with both hands. You're gonna grab both hands on the wrist. Note how immediately we get in the body positioning. The knees are bent, the shoulders are relaxed. She makes a fist, she reaches in, she bends the knees, brings the elbow up, yells back off, and then leave the situation. Since they, what if they tried to get me in a bear hug? Stand up move. What to do if someone is coming at you, trying to grab you from the front, or maybe they have pushed you into the wall. First thing you do is step back, body positioning. Now you see why this move is very important. The next thing we do is we make a fist. Shut the door, lock it. Never put your thumb in. Thumb goes on the outside. We make the hand and arm forearm tight. We do not have the fist in closer than the elbow. It's either even or slightly out, never inside. This is the frame. Knees are bent. The other hand comes up on to your own wrist. Grab. This arm is straight. If you bend it, it's weak. Straighten that out. Very important that we have the knees bent. We can place the forearm across the chest of the opponent or the throat area. This is not a move that you're going to keep someone back for long periods of time, but this can buy you a little bit of time and keep that individual from bear hugging you. Best self-defense is one foot in front of the other as quickly as you can. Escape is the name of the game. 
There are no heroes really in standing up to a bully. Don't ever penalize your children for running away from a fight. It could create a mindset in them that makes them think that you'll be disappointed in them if they run away from bullying. And that could lead not only to serious physical injury, but also psychological injury to your child. Sensei, nobody listens to me ever. We're going to deal now with body positioning, hand positioning, eye positioning. Bullies are looking for a victim, not a fight. We're going to get our body and mind into a confident, reassuring position. You have to start with your basic stance. That is the key to self-defense. How you present yourself to that person that is exhibiting bully behaviors to you. The first thing we need to do is foot positioning. We need to step back, shoulder width and a half, preferably at an angle, not straight back. We're at about a 45 degree angle, knees are bent. Foundation is the key to your stance. The next thing we have to do is hand positioning. Hands come up, palms are open. Closed fists show aggression. Open palms, non-aggression. This is non-verbal self-defense. This is telling the person to back off. Fingertips are even with the earlobes. Knees are bent. Shoulders are relaxed. The eye contact, never look your opponent in the eyes. I would suggest looking right in this area, right on the throat. You have to make the person confronting you believe your intentions. And then the vital part of this whole move is use of the voice. Bring the voice from the abdomen, bring it up and out. Don't scream from the chest, you will lose your voice. Scream or yell from your stomach. Make them believe it. And what we're going to tell them is back off. So what we will do is once you get in that position, hands are up, elbows are in, and we yell back off real loud. Back off! Back off! Back off! And then you leave. have to give people options to deal with bully behavior rather than resorting to using your fists or feet or pushing or anything physical. Some of the ways to deal with the bullies that we can role play are use of the voice. We can work on getting help, going to a teacher, a policeman, a parent. We could trick the bully. We could make friends with the bully, talk to the bully, ignore the bully make the bully laugh. So we have many alternatives. Some work short term, such as tricking the bully. Some work long term, such as talking to the bully, making friends with the bully. Quite possible to have a little bit of fun doing this too. You know, children love to play act. And it wouldn't hurt you to occasionally do the same thing. There's a child in all of us, remember. You can role play these things. You can role play these options with your kid and actually have a little fun. Remember, practice is essential. Practice makes perfect. Okay, one of the things you're gonna have to work is the role playing. Get the people involved. We have the victim, we have the bully. Act out what we're doing. This is how, this will reinforce your attitude. This will reinforce your positioning, your body, your hand positioning, how you think. The more you act out this, when it does happen for real, you will be able to respond to it. First thing we're going to work is ignoring the bully. It takes a lot of self-control to ignore somebody that is calling you names, somebody that's trying to pick a fight with you, but we're going to work on ignoring. Don't forget about your personal space. Don't forget that the best weapon you have is your leg so you can leave. Don't stand around when somebody's calling you names 
because they will push a button on you. Do we understand that? If you stick around, your anger will eventually rise up. So we ignore, then we leave. Okay? So we have the bully, we have the victim. Don't forget again about your personal space. And let's try that. The bully comes in. Hey! Very simple procedure, ignoring the bully, leaving the situation. Another situation works really well for short term, one time is tricking the bully. This will work, like I said, for the moment. It may not work the next day if the bully comes at you again. That's where we may have to use another method for dealing with bully behavior. Trick the bully. Don't forget again about your personal space. Stepping back, keeping the hands up. But this time we're gonna work a trick. Okay, bully comes in. Hey. Look, your shoes are untied. The way to deal with a bully is to keep the role moving so that you don't get stuck in that role of victim or stuck in the role of bully or bystander. Another method we can use that works very effective in school is telling them that the teacher or the principal is behind. So let's try that one. So the bully comes in. Hey, boy, now. Look, look, the teacher's behind you. And then they're gone. Very simple but effective ways to deal with the bully. Another way, this is a very good method to use at school, is to get help. There should always be a teacher around within shouting distance. That's why we're use of voice is very important. So on getting the teacher, the bully will come in. You will use that voice. You will tell them to back off. You will go and get a teacher and bring the teacher back to the situation. Or if the bully follows you, you go to the teacher. Hopefully the bully will stop. I got teachers that listen, like Miss Jackson, she'll come over and be like, whack, whack, no. So you feel, you feel over and yell at them. Justice, yeah. Huh? Justice. So you have like a teacher, like, it's like around you. Mm -hmm. So your advice to teachers is get involved? Yeah. yeah. It says he's getting picked on, do something about it. Go tell the principal. Mr. Brown, I'm getting bullied in the hall, and now I'm really sick of it. Can you help me? Smart move, Frank, coming to me more methods on distracting or tricking the bully. Doing something completely unexpected for the situation is a great way to stop or get away from bullying behavior. One way is you have a cold, you sneeze. So I'm the bully, I come up, hey, give me your lunch money right now. I mean right <coughs> oh. Can I use No, 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 get, get away from me. Another method that works really well, the sneezing, showing everyone your hands. Another one is acting like you're gonna get sick. Hey, I am sick of you. I'm gonna start, what? Stay away from me. And then a great one that works at school, because there's always such a head lice problem, is Using the old scratch in the head for getting rid of the lice routine. Hey, give me your lunch money right... What? What? My mom didn't really get rid of the lice that I had last oh. year. Okay, all right. Back off. I'm out of here. These methods work really well to distract, trick the bully. They're very good short-term, quick solutions to the bullying problem, and they may be very effective for you. Sensei! What if they won't stop picking on me? Another method that takes a lot of self-control on the person that's being bullied is refusing to fight no matter what happens. This is when someone is in your face. They may even be physically pushing you. They may be following you around. But no matter what happens, you refuse to fight. So if I'm in your face, make sure you get the body positioning. This is very important that you move around on this one. Don't just stand there. Move around, refuse to fight. You could tell me no, 
back off, and then eventually you want to get out of there and leave. So if I come up, hey, you want to fight? No. Hey, I said right now, do you want to fight? Right now. I'm no. sick of, come no. on, I'm sick of, I'm sick of it. That was very good, you two, but what you need to work on, this is very movement oriented. You don't let her get that close to you. You are moving. You are getting out of there. You watch that space. Do not allow me to get this close. This is an active position. If she is a bully and coming in my face, no! You're constantly moving, constantly moving, keeping away, keeping that space. So everything you, else you did was great. Refuse to fight no matter what happens, OK? Let's see what happens here. Mr. Josh himself. I got better things to hang around with you guys. Got coming? Yeah. Sensei, what if they make fun of how I dress? Next technique is agreeing with the bully. It takes a lot of self-control. This confuses the bully. It's something completely unexpected. You agree with whatever they say. You refuse to fight, then you leave. This type of bullying is done on your appearance, how you look, what your job is or your parents job, how your, your facial expressions, how you wear your hair, your shoes. So this type of bullying is done more on appearance. This is the type of bullying where I will come up and start berating the person. Hey, you look funny. Look, where'd you get those shoes? Oh yeah, I, I don't like them either. I got my mom bought them for me. What about that silly looking jacket you're wearing? You're not even zipped, you haven't got it zipped up all the way. Yeah, I don't like this outfit either, you know? What are all those bumps doing in your hair? I know. The gel I used this morning was horrible. How come you have to walk to school every day? Don't your parents have a car? Are your parents poor? No, but we just haven't got a, my, we just didn't get a car yet. Man, you are no fun to talk to. I, I tried to ignore them, but they don't stop. They, all, all day long. You ignore them, they, they pick on you all day long. Yeah, you'd be like, me, 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 and you just ignore them. Me, 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 all, all through the whole day, in all classes. Like, they go, <coughs> booger ear or something. Oof. And then they would, you, there was no place in the school you felt safe, right? You'd go to the bathroom. They'd go. <coughs> Floor ice. Yeah. yeah. You're so stupid. You're right. Two times two is one. Thanks for all your help, sister. Let's go. Another method that we have for dealing with bullies is more of a long-term solution. This is a solution that could work, not just like tricking the bully, which works at the moment. This is a solution that could work over a period of time, making friends with the bully, showing them that you can be their friend, showing them that they have some self-worth, that a lot of bullies don't have good friends. You know, I heard you do karate. Yeah, I do, yeah. Yeah, and I bet you think you're just so cool, don't you? No, I right? don't. No, no. I think, you know, like you can use your hands and feet to kick everybody and you break your boards and you go chop, chip, 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 chip. You really think you're cool, don't you, huh? You want you want to fight? You want no, to show me? No, that? no, I don't. I think maybe if you wanted to, you could come take a few lessons. What do you, what do you mean? It's good exercise and it's fun. You mean come with you to do some karate? Yeah. Really? It's It's really fun. Oh, wow, you, that sounds kind of cool. I've always wanted to learn karate. And I just always thought that you were, thought you were so big and tough and cool because you did karate, but wow, you really are a nice person. Sure, thanks. How do you speak to a bully? Do you scream and shout at them? Do you cuss at them? No, you don't. If you are angry and hostile back to a bully, it simply makes them angrier, unless you're lucky unless they're afraid, and then they may run away. Hey, here comes Billy and Joey. Well, look who we have here, Mr. Josh himself. I got better things to hang around with you guys. Got coming? Yeah. yeah. Mr. Brown, I'm getting bullied in the hall, and now I'm really sick of it. Can you help me? Smart move, Frank, coming to me. You're so stupid. 
stupid. You're right. Two times two is one. Thanks for all your help, big sister. Let's go. Oh, my God. 